Hello and welcome. Thanks for popping into my channel. If you are new here, please like and subscribe for me. If you find this content helpful, smash that notification bell so that you don't miss out on the next video. Comment below with anything that you need help with or topics you'd like me to cover and check out my website, consultingninja.tech. With that out of the way, let's get to it. We are going to be looking at loading data in SvelteKit. If you are using SvelteKit, you are most certainly going to be loading data, and there's many ways that we can do this with SvelteKit, so let's get into some examples. Briefly looking at the documentation, I'll point out that uh, the data is loaded before the plus page.svelte and before the plus layout.svelte. This is what it looks like. There's an export function load that you run and export and according to the documentation this will be available inside of your page as export let data and then whatever object your load function returns so let's go give that a try inside of the base routes directory here we already have a plus page dot svelte and a plus layout dot svelte let's add the plus page dot js so plus page.js. Now this is going to be our load function. And what we need to do is export function load and then return an object. And let's just return an object with a name of Raspberry Pi. I like Raspberry Pis. They're impossible to find <laughs> unless you want to pay too much money. And single board computer. Price, well, probably $110 these days. So I have this plus page.js now. That's great. And inside of plus page.svelte, the documentation says that I can access it like this open a script tag and say export let data let's give this a shot and see what happens so down here let's make another p and let's do data dot name like that and give this a save and let's go take a look hey there is our raspberry pi name well that's interesting okay let's do a few more because we have a few other properties on that object. Let's do the, the description. And the price. And give that a save and go take a look. And there is our Raspberry Pi name, our description, and our price. So that is how you load data from the page.js load function and how you display it in your component. Now you also, so besides this data that you're loading in page.js and we're rendering here, you also can create a plus layout.js. So let's do that. Let's make a plus layout.js and we can load data from here as well. So let's do that. Let's copy and paste this to save ourselves some time. And let's just, let's get rid of everything but the name and just say, I am data, I am data loaded by layout.js. Give that a save. And now let's go into layout and we are going to export let data here well, let's just add up here let's add an h1 and say i am the data loaded by layout.js and then in here do data dot name and give that a save and let's go take a look well i'll be there is our data and because it's in that base layout that is going to apply to every page that uh, the layout has run through it which would be all of them every page in your application 
So that's cool. Okay, so we can load data both in uh, the page.js and also in layout.js. But these are not great examples because in the real world, we would want to be pulling from an API or something like that. So let's take a look at what an example doing an asynchronous call would look like. And let's go ahead and close this one for now and close that one for now. Inside of the page.js, let's change this up a bit. Let's make this an async function. Async function like that. And here, we're gonna have to open this up a bit. What we want to do is let's do a const u response equals to await. And we have to import here or pass along this special fetch. This is from SvelteKit. It's a fetch with, that does some additional things underneath the scenes that you don't really need to worry about. But we do have to pass that along here. So inside of the load, inside of the function call itself, you do a bracket fetch bracket, just like that. And then we just do a fetch like you normally would. You don't have to pay attention to anything else. I do have this giant URL uh, in a notepad file here. And I'm just going to copy that because it is so long. I don't want to make any mistakes. So I'll go ahead and paste this like that. I'll also point out that all of the examples that I'm using for APIs are from uh, API Fenny. It's supposed to be like a play on the word epiphany.io. And they have a website that you can use. They have the top 15 free APIs available. You can use all of them for free. So they're super helpful. Okay, so now const u data, and we're going to await the u response.json like that. Oops. And then what I'm pinging here, this free API that I'm pinging is a list of universities across the United States. Uh, and so I'll do universities is equal to u data like that and then i'm going to go ahead and return universities universities when both things are the same exact word you can actually shortcut it to this but to make sure this is clear what is going on i'm going to type both out so universities is equal to universities all right let's give that a save and then inside of our page Let's pull that data out. So this would be a list, says it's a list. Let's do an each hashtag each data.universities as university and then close this each off like that. And then we'll just do a paragraph and render out university like that give that a save and see what happens and they are objects so we need to do a json dot stringify and there we can see each of the universities so that is how we can load data directly from page.js into our page.svelte, so our home page. That's pretty cool. Uh, let's try something similar in the layout.js, or let's just move this. Let's just cut this out, cut that out, and inside of here, let's plop that there, and save it, and don't save, and I'll just delete that one. All right, so give that a save. Give this a refresh. And what you're gonna notice here, you're gonna be like, wait a minute, all of the data is still there. And the reason is because when you do a load, the data is still available. So you see here, I still have export let data. I still have the each and the json.stringify. 
And all of that is still available because every child component has this data available to it. You might be saying, well, what if, <laughs> what if you load the same thing twice? Or if you load something with a similar name, well, then it's, let's look at the documentation somewhere in here. It's available do do do. If you load multiple at the same key, the last one wins. So last one there wins. And here is where in the documentation, it's saying that the data returned from layout load functions is available to child, not just that, that child layout, but also the layout and the page as well as a layout it belongs to. So that's, that's interesting. So that makes the data available in many more places. So here I have that layout.js that's loading that those universities and my page.svelte is grabbing up that data and there's nothing else that's preventing it from getting those universities. There's no other universities being loaded by anything else. So the page has that data available to it and there it is. It's right there in the home page. So nice, that's, that's pretty cool. Now let's go look at doing this inside of a child component or a different page. We can take a look at that. And so inside of courses, let me make another file there called plus page.js. And there we're gonna do something similar. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste. And instead of the instead of the universities, I'm going to use the good old fashioned random user. And that looks that's a pretty short URL. It is just https random user dot me slash API slash just like that. And then we can call this user. And well, we can call all of these user like that. Give that a save and let's just double check. Uh, this does actually need an S. So this is HTTPS random user dot ME slash API slash. Now inside of the courses plus page dots felt inside of the script tag, we just do an export let data and then we can access that user. Let's go ahead and do that here make a p tag and let's just say uh well we'll need to json.stringify this i'm sure json.stringify and we'll do a data.user and give that a save go to our courses page and there we have our random user so that's pretty cool uh, that's how we can load data both from our plus page.js we can also load data with a plus layout.js and then that data is available. Now let's do, it's available in all child components. Let's do one more test of that. I want to see if I can access data loaded from the, the parent. So the home layout.js is loading data, those universities. I'm curious if let's do this in real time and see if we can access those here as well. So let's do a json.stringify data.universities sub zero. Let's do like that and see what happens. And I'll be darned, there it is. So it really is available in all child components, even across pages. That's pretty helpful and useful stuff. There is more that we can do here. I will have to cover that in a separate video as this is pretty involved and I don't want these videos to ever get too long. I hope that you guys have found this video helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for more. I got more great content coming to you. Thank you so much for all of your support so far. Have a great day. Mm -hmm.